anti liver kidney microsomal antibody occur in pediatric age group and when it's occur in the adult it will be associated with hcv positive hepatitis c positive the third type it is an adult patient the antibody which is occurred in this type of immune liver disease is the soluble liver antigen and antibody for this antigen the autoimmune disease of the liver it is associated as we mentioned with other uh, antibody and uh, antibody disease and usually there is a genetic susceptibility in those patient which is lead to the care of the clinical manifestation of this disease how the patient will be presented the onset is insidious onset it's occur gradually start with a fatigue anorexia quarter of the cases only occur as an acute hepatitis but the resolution is not okay it will be presented like an acute hepatitis uh, fatigue uh, anorexia jaundice but it is not resolved so we will think of the other causes the condition associated with fever arthralgia vitiligo as part of autoimmune disease epistaxis aminoria the jaundice is mild moderate or absent and there is a sign of chronic liver disease because the disease is not resolved what we mean by a sign of the chronic liver disease there will be jaundice there will be spider nevi there will be palmar erythema gynecomastia in male uh the face will be cushionoid face you know cushionoid face it is a round face like a moon we called moon like face acne is also one of the manifestation hirsutism there is a pink cutaneous striae we we'll see it on the upper on the abdomen and the upper part of thigh it was it is pink and this is different from the striae which occur after pregnancy uh, it will be pale while that's because of cushing because of autoimmune disease and the steroid and cushing condition it will be pink there will be feature of other autoimmune disease as we mentioned maybe there is associated thyroid disease associated addison disease what diagnosis we will uh, what steps of uh, investigations we will stand the liver blood test you know this is we mean that i will send of alt ast total serum bilirubin direct and indirect and uh, we will send for the antibody as we mentioned the anti nuclear anti smooth muscle there will be elevated in the serum immunoglobulin uh, and maybe we'll need for the liver biopsy that will take a piece of the liver percutaneously and in case of autoimmune disease it will give us a feature of interface hepatitis with or without cirrhosis this is in the liver biopsy how we manage the case the corticosteroid will be for the 2 years and we monitor the dose about 1 mg per kg uh, by uh, the liver serology test i mean the alt and the ast and then we will decrease the dose to get rid of the steroid side effect we will combine with azathioprine it is a type of cytotoxic drug to reduce the dose of the steroid and its side effect sometimes we need a mycophenolate drug when there is a relapsing uh, course another important cause of chronic liver disease as you know previous lecture we was uh, reported 
uh, chronic liver disease because viral hepatitis, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, and hepatitis E in immune compromised patients. We mentioned alcoholic liver disease, and we mentioned an autoimmune disease of the liver. These are a causes of a chronic liver disease, and we add other cause of a chronic liver disease, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That means that there is increase in the level of the fat level of the fat in the liver tissue, but not because of alcohol. So it's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And the uh, abstract for this is the uh, NAFLD, NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, where there is a fatty infiltration. So we call it steatosis. When there is inflammation over the fat infiltration, we call it called NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Non-alcoholic means the cause other than alcohol. S means steatosis, fat infiltration. H, hepatitis, itis means there is an inflammation. How you know that there is inflammation? There will be increase of the liver enzymes, the ALT and the AST. Of course, this is, if it is a progress, it leads to the cirrhosis. What we mean by cirrhosis, when there is a replacement of process and formation of nodule, which is disturb the normal architecture of the liver. And this fatty infiltration, it increases the risk of liver-related death and cardiovascular disease 10 times. What are the other causes? Other than alcohol, in non-alcoholic fatty liver, there is an obesity, type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is called metabolic syndrome that's associated with this lipidemia. The type of lipid which is increased in patient with non-alcoholic fatty liver is triglyceride. Triglyceride. Other cause of fatty infiltration is drugs. For example, amiodarone. Amiodarone. So we put occur as a side effect or a progression of NASH, which is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. The hepatitis, the inflammation, may be lead to liver fibrosis, and then cirrhosis, maybe liver cancer, I mean a hepatocellular carcinoma. Of course, this is associated of cardiovascular disease. This diagram would show that the uh, what's happened, part of the pathology of NASH, when there is, as you see, in this, there is increase of the fat. And when NASH okay, there is a, dis a decrease in the survival versus, uh, versus the general population. Of course, as we mentioned, increase of the liver-related mortality, increase of cardiovascular mortality, there is increased level of cirrhosis of death. Of course, this is a risk of cirrhosis, which is lead to hepatocellular carcinoma, which may be sometimes need to transplant. Otherwise, there will be a risk of death. So 25% of the general population, 70% of uh, have a NASH or NAFLD, and 70% in diabetes and obese patient. So, fatty liver is increased in diabetic patient and obese patient. This is other pathway when a healthy liver develops steatosis, and this is steatosis lead to NASH and increase in the fibrosis and cirrhosis and increase in the mortality rate. Uh, this slide shows the pathology of what happened when there is a liver steatosis there is a fatty acid influx and fatty acid oxidation, and this leads to insulin resistance because of fat infiltration. Of course, this leads to inflammatory process, uh, tumor necrotizing factor, endotoxin, and then which lead to cirrhosis. Uh, there is a triglyceride, a satellite cell activation, which is responsible for the fibrosis and cirrhosis. So most of NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver, is insulin resistance. And there is a, this, a 
idea that in case of alcoholic uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, there is two hit, two hit, first hit and the second hit. For example, the first hit lead to the steatosis and insulin resistance, and the second hit there will be free fatty acid, which is lead to the non-alcoholic fatty non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. So the first hit is the fat, and the second hit because of free fatty acid lead to the inflammation, oxidation, and hepatitis. And this is, of course, associated with a tumor necrotizing factor and inflammatory process. How the patient will be presented? Either asymptomatic abnormality in the liver enzymes. The patient during checking for another cause, he found that his ALT is AST is elevated. Or sometimes he do an ultrasound because of anything, renal problem, for example, and he... Uh, found that there is a fatty liver or the patient presented as a form of fatigue mild abdominal discomfort or sometimes he presented as a case of acute hepatitis as a chronic liver disease as a complicated chronic liver disease i mean cirrhosis where patient will be presented by a finding of portal hypertension or hepatocellular carcinoma we will mention on the next lectures. Jaundice occur when the cirrhosis is established. The average age of NASH is 40 to 50 year old, NASH and cirrhosis 50 to 60. They found that child obesity is a risk factor for adult obesity, and this is considered to be a risk for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Risk factors for uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, usually the age over than 45, associate diabetes and insulin resistance, obesity, hypertension. Sometimes they will be associated with polycystic ovary, obstructive sleep apnea, small bowel bacterial overgrowth. Investigations that will be elevated in the ALT AST, of course, in case of NASH. Uh, and to differentiate between a fatty liver from NASH, there will be elevation of ALT and AST. While in case of non alcoholic fatty liver disease, before formation of inflammation, the ALT and AST will be normal. Transaminase will be less than twofold of the normal. If the normal, for example, is 30, it will be less than 60. When the AST more than the ALT, this means the patient goes toward cirrhosis, and it is different from that of viral. In case of viral hepatitis, usually the ALT will be more than AST. Gamma glutamyl transferase will be elevated. The low antinuclear antibody uh, will there. The serum ferritin sometimes it will be elevated as an acute phase reactant. As we mentioned, this is maybe part of metabolic syndrome when the body mass index more than 25 with tranquil obesity. The ultrasound show bright liver because of fat. Sometimes they need MRI and CT scan and fibro scan. This is a, a test similar to that of ultrasound. They will measure the amount, the qual quantitative amount of fat in the liver. The golden uh, investigations is the liver biopsy, where they measure the fat, and there is a macrovesicular uh, nodule, which may be lead to cirrhosis, and of course you have to exclude history of alcoholic. Uh, this uh, photo shows the difference in pathology regarding the pathology between a fatty liver and normal tissue. You see there is increase in the fat this is the white circle and as you see this is in histopathology uh, this is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease this is only fat while well, here as you see there is inflammatory cells that means there is inflammation so it's change from just a fat infiltration to inflammation and this is that mean that alcoholic 
uh, steatohepatitis because as you see, this is the inflammatory cells. 